Hello guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Hit the bell icon button so that you don't miss out any tutorial. And that is a, a decision tree. Uh, and um, so like a K nearest neighbor, um, a decision tree can be used for both regression and classification. And so to kind of motivate the idea here, we'll, we'll look at that classification example uh, that we looked at with the K nearest neighbors. Um, but then whenever we get back into the cancer data set uh, with the regression modeling, we'll look at it from a, a regression context. So let's um let's go back to let's go back to the sample data we discussed earlier. Okay, we discussed earlier. So we had we created this um thing we called it we just called it mod data. Let's we'll take a look at that data frame real quick. And we saw that we had um you know th three variables there's height, there's weight, and then there's gender. Um, and so we just want to create a, a plot of that um, data equals mod data, and we'll create a, a scatter plot. So we'll do geome point, um, and our aesthetic. We'll just put x, or we'll put height on the x-axis. We'll put weight on the y-axis, and then we will color according to according to the gender. And of course, this is just made up data, but um, but here we go. And so we, we can see that we've got, you know, this fictitious data where we have height on the x-axis and weight on the y-axis and the different colors, the, the blue or male and the, the, the uh, pink color or red color is, is female. And so you say, well, what, what is a, a decision tree? Well, a decision tree, let's just take some notes here while we're, while we're talking. Um, a decision tree is a method of partitioning uh, the sample space. Okay, a decision tree is a method of partitioning the sample space. So what do we mean by partitioning? Well, here our sample space is really just one giant grid. And so the height runs, in this case, from 38 up to about 83, and the weight runs from about 100 up to, say, 250. And within that, um, we have the, the classification of male and female. And so what we want to do, though, in a decision tree is, is partition this into areas where we might, uh, we might get a better read. So, for example, we can kind of look over here and say, well, about half of these are male and about half are female. Right? So one, one naive model would be to take some random new observation and say, basically flip a coin. Heads it's, heads it's male, tails is, is female, right? And you'd have a 50-50 shot. So that would be kind of a, a naive uh, estimate. But what we want to do then it, 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 with a decision tree is partition this sample space and see if we can do better than a coin flip. So, for example, I noticed that there's kind of this, this group down here. And so if I were to partition... Uh, the sample space to say, let's say weight is less than 175 and height is less than 67, right? So if I had um, weight less than 175, so everything below 175 on the weight, and height is less than 67, so everything to the left of 167, so below 175, less to the left of 67, Anything out here, I could I could treat this as kind of one region of the sample space, and then I would say, well, within that region, look, we're five for five. A hundred percent, a hundred percent of the observations are female, and so I might say that, well, hey, if I have a new observation that's that falls into that section of the sample space where it's below 175 on weight, below 67 on height, um, then we're just going to say. 100% of the time, that is female, and so we would we would offer a prediction on that new um, that new observation uh, of female if we were in in this sample space. Um, if we said, well, let, let's maybe go over to this this section of the sample space, and we say, okay, well, um, we're less than 175, but now we want to be greater than or equal to 67. Okay, greater than or equal to 67. So still less than 175, but greater than or equal to 67. Well, now we would say, okay, I got, looks like uh, if I'm under here and to the right of 67, we have four males and three females. So if we were in that section of the, the sample space, in this section, 
uh, we might say, okay, well, there's a four out of seven chance that, that our new observation is male. So it's, it's most likely that we would get male. So we would predict male, right? Um, and so then we would kind of go on and on through the, through the sample space here. And we would just begin to sort of block off or cordon off sections of the sample space that we felt like gave us a better read than just a coin flip. Better, a better read on uh, how what the breakdown of male and female is in the in the training data. Uh, a better read rather than just rather than just a, a coin flip. Um, so so let's go ahead and and let let's jot that note down formally. So the partitioning. So the partitioning is determined by a measure of improved accuracy on the training data. Okay? Partitioning is determined by, by a measure of improved accuracy on the training data. In other words, one new observation, again, we could just say 50-50 shot, male or female, but as we, as we cordon off or partition off the sample space, we can do better than a 50-50 estimate. Uh, we can get clearer pictures of where the where the the data lies, and so in that way, it is similar to K nearest neighbors, except that of course in K nearest neighbors we're picking, we're kind of identifying a cluster here. So in this case, we'd sort of be restricted to this cluster. Uh, it probably wouldn't grab the entire uh, partition here. It wouldn't give us a rule, so to speak, to say. Um, you know, less than 155 and less than 67, it would just identify the cluster. But in a decision tree, we, we partition. We get a whole, a whole region of the space that, that would allow us to offer that prediction. And so you say, well, what, what do you mean a measure of improved accuracy? What is the measure? Well, um, th there are several different measures that can be used. The most popular one is going to be the Gini index. That's G-I-N-I, G-I-N-I, Gini uh, index or the Gini impurity. Um, that, that's a, a popular one. You'll, you'll see comments about entropy. Uh, let's write that one, entropy, etc. So it's a little bit out of scope for what we're doing here to kind of list all of those. Um, most of the time, if you just use a stock algorithm, uh, it's using the Gini index. And so all that means is it's measuring as you partition off this space, do the, do the observations become more and more pure? That's what you're looking for. You want more, less noise, less scattering. You want to partition off the sample space to be more and more pure. And so if you're doing that, the Gini index will pick up on that. And so that's how the algorithm will decide where the, the partitions take place. And of course, there's some error there. So it is typical to use some type of cross-validation. It's typical to use some type of cross-validation. So that's the idea behind a, a decision tree. Um, we can't really look at a model yet until we fit one, so we'll do that here uh, in, in the next video. Um, but that's the idea behind the decision tree, is that you have all these data points scattered about, and we just want to partition off or section off the space uh, to give us a more pure read on uh, how the, the data is distributed. So in this example, we've discussed uh, a classification example, um, but really uh, with regression, it's the same way, and it's, it just simply tells us to, uh, instead of, Instead of looking at the probability of, of cases or the ratio of cases, we'd be looking at the average response, looking at the average response there. So we'll talk more about that uh, here in just a minute whenever we build the decision tree for our cancer data. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you like the video, do give us a thumbs up and share it. Also, check out amazing discounts and offers on our premium courses in the description below.